As an astrophotographer, many people often ask me what is the first object you can image or observe with a telescope like yours, or how far can you look with a telescope like yours? And that's definitely a great question that I'm interested in myself as well. So tonight we will capture one of the most distant objects in our universe. In fact, I have planned to capture a quasar tonight. So quite close to the M97 nebula, there is a quasar. So this quasar is located at a distance of more than 10 billion light years. So when this quasar was formed, planet Earth didn't even exist. So that shows how old this object is. And that will definitely be a very challenging target for tonight because those objects are very dark and very small. So I'm not sure if that telescope is big enough, but it will definitely be a challenge and I would like to face that challenge tonight. So over the past few years and months, I've captured galaxies, nebulae and planets and all of those objects and these objects are often millions of light years away but the object we'll capture tonight is a few billion light years away so I'm definitely interested in if I will get an image of that quasar the next morning and if I'm able to reveal structures in that object for sure this will be a challenging night stay tuned and have fun watching this video this video is not sponsored and I'm not being paid for it. Our products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But now we'd like to start with the video. The very first thing that will be really interesting to you is which telescope are we going to use for tonight. So now we'd like to shortly introduce this telescope because I already made a few upgrades in the last days to improve that telescope for tonight even further. Um, so the basis of this entire setup will be this mount. So Earth is rotating and therefore we need to track the entire night sky in order to not get star trails in our final image. So this is the HEQ5 Pro go-to mount from Skywatcher and on the top of that telescope I have attached my telescope. So this one is a toying telescope, it has a focal length of 750mm and an aperture of 150mm. So tonight we'll be shooting at 750 millimeters, which will, which is definitely not that much for that small object. So I'm definitely excited if I'm going to achieve great results. I could use a barrel lens, but the one I personally own is not that good, and I would definitely lose a lot of uh, details in my image because um, the barrel lens is not that great. So I will, I will shoot at um, f, uh, at f 5.0 and focal length of 750 millimeters, and we will test if that is enough to reveal this quasar. Since this is a Newtonian telescope, we will have a lot of coma in our final image. Therefore, I will attach uh, a coma corrector to that telescope, so we will be using the Maxwell coma corrector to not, to not have co uh, coma in the corners in order to capture the entire field of view. So I made a few upgrades to that telescope, so at the back uh, I attached a main mirror mask on the telescope, to improve the spikes um, so hopefully everything works quite uh, of the plan and at the back of the telescope I have attached um, this piece here so for all of you who are using a skywatcher telescope as well you probably know that at the back of, the of your telescope there are, is a glass and unfortunately when a car just drives um, it shines the, in the back here and you will get a lot of light in that telescope and that definitely um, has a negative impact on your light frames. So I just built that uh, to protect uh, the telescope. I really hope that that works tonight and I'm really excited for that. Uh, on the other side of the telescope, I'll be using the CWO ASI Air Pro, which allows me to control the entire setup for tonight and to select the selected framing I would like to capture tonight. Here at the back, I have attached my guiding system, so I'll be using the CWO ASI 120mm mini mono guiding cam in combination with a 60mm guide scope with a focal length of 240mm. Um, later, I will as well attach uh, my camera, which will be the Canon EOS 2000D with an APC sensor. Unfortunately, it's not modified, so it's not that great for capturing those H alpha regions, but uh, tonight uh, that should be no problem. So tonight there will be a new moon, to be more precise there will be a no moon at all tonight which is definitely great because um, the, dark, the night sky will be very dark tonight which is definitely great for tonight. Um, so I think that's the entire uh, telescope we'll be using for tonight and I'm really excited if we will be able to capture um, this quasar tonight. Now a few things about um, the object we'll be capturing tonight. Um, so I've actually looked for a few objects, so a few quasars and in general I have looked for a few objects and I looked for the object with 
uh, the biggest distance and there are a few quasars in the Ursa Major constellation and um, but I've selected the one um, quite close to the M97 nebula because this one is the most distant quasar I could find. So if you guys know another quasar that is located even further from Earth, definitely make sure to write this object down below in the comments and then we will capture this object in another video perhaps. And But the object we will capture tonight is located at a distance of 10 billion light years, which is definitely, definitely very, very much. And if you compare that to the galaxies and the object I've captured over the past few years, which are located at a distance of sometimes 30 million light years, that's definitely a huge, a huge uh, step and I'm very excited if I'm able to reveal this object tonight. So tonight it will be quite windy, but I'm using the auto guiding system, but I would like to use a single exposure time of one minute because I'm not sure how much the impact of the wind will be on this entire setup because if it's moving, we'll get not that round stars and that's definitely a problem because this object is very, very small and if the telescope, if the tracking is not that perfect and the stars are not perfectly round, uh, we'll already lose a lot of details because it will still be very hard um, to reveal this very fine object even if the tracking is perfect. So we have to uh, get perfect sharp images. That's definitely the goal for tonight. Therefore I will try to capture a single exposure time of one minute and uh, f5.0 and an ISO value of 800. So this is the ISO value um, I'm, use I'm always using and that's definitely the ISO value where I will have less noise in my file image. So that's definitely everything I would like to mention for tonight. Now we have to wait until it gets dark. Uh, there are already no clouds, so it definitely seems like the conditions tonight will be perfect. And that's definitely something we need for tonight because those objects will be so hard, so challenging. I'm definitely excited if everything goes to plan. And uh, we see you, we'll see us later when we capture the quasar using this amateur telescope. So last night everything went quite according to plan. I captured the object I have planned to capture and as you can see in the background everything worked quite according to plan. I already stacked and combined all the light frames captured yesterday and as you can see I was able to reveal the object in the framing itself. I'm not 100% happy with the image but as you can see how the image turned out to be great. Something about the image in general, so I've captured uh, nearly 180 single light frames of that framing which results in uh, around 3 hours of total exposure time. So actually I've captured something like 300 single light frames but uh, unfortunately in the morning it, um, it was so bright and light frames, I was not able to use these light frames for my final image. So I only stacked and combined 180 light frames, so 3 hours of total exposure time. Um, in summary, I've captured the images at an ISO value of 800 because that's the um, the value where I have less noise in my final image and right now there's summer so the temperatures are high even during the night and therefore it's very important to get less noise in the final image and I think I was able to achieve that definitely. When zooming into the corners you can as well see that um, there is no comma in it so the comma corrector did a great job, fantastic. And But the only problem you can say when looking at the bright stars, for example, this one, for example, or, or this one here, you can see that these stars are looking a bit like triangulums. And that's due to um, the mirror mask I've attached to my main mirror. So the, prim so the primary mirror mask. When attaching that primary mirror mask not perfectly on your main mirror, then you will get those triangular shaped stars. And that is a problem I definitely have in that image. So I definitely will remove uh, the primary mirror mask once again and then attach it back again. And then we'll try to capture an image in the future and hopefully um, the stars turn out to be better. But in this case, we have to live with that and I don't think that it's that big problem. So the image in summary looks great, definitely. So we can see that the stars uh, are nearly perfectly round, which is very important for the very, very, very uh, small object we've captured during that night. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, something about the framing in general. So we have um, this nebula here, so the M97 nebula, which is um, the area where the quasar is located as well. But in the framing, we have another galaxy, which is this one here. I think that's the surfboard galaxy. Um, 
M108, I think. So M108. So um, they perfectly fit in the framing. Great framing, I think. And I really like that one. Um, but the main uh, idea behind that image was to capture one of the most distant objects in our universe. And I have already um, edited the entire picture in GIMP to show you where these objects are located. Um, let me show you guys. Here we go. So the very first object is this one here. So a surfboard galaxy I found are uh, different uh, distances. So these are between 28 million light years and uh, nearly 50 uh, million light years. So uh, something like uh, 45 million light years, but that's not the most distant object in that image. So um, this object here is around 2,600 light years. As you can see already, I marked that one here. But the object that is the most distant object I've ever captured is this object here down below. So as you can already see here, 10 billion light years. That's impressive. So when this quasar was formed, planet Earth didn't even exist. So that's pretty amazing what we amateur astrophotographers can capture. So you can see um, in that image, we have this object, for example, when we're looking at this image as in total, you can see this object and this one, and you think that the most distant object you have captured is that one here. But when looking at a close look at your image, you can definitely uh, reveal great structures, great objects. And as you can see, this object here, 10 billion light years, is an object that you only see when doing a lot of research in the internet. This, this is at least what I did. And now to the object. So when zooming here, I mean, the object is a very dark one. So um, we will not able to reveal that great structures in that object, but I mean, that's pretty sure. We have to keep in mind that this object is 10 billion light years away, which is a huge dis distance. And it's in general very amazing that we even can capture that object. So I have not expected to reveal more uh, details in that object. But as when zooming here a bit more, you can see um, this very dim object here. So um, I know you can't see that, that great, but you can see that there's an object, and that object here is a quasar. And this quasar is located at a distance of 10 billion light years. So that's enormous that we are able, even, even able to capture that object. I've seen a lot of people in the internet who captured the same framing as well. And um, so um, this nebula here, so some people used big telescope and only used that framing here. And you can, in, the, in their image, you can see great structures. And I've looked a few, a few of them and some of them took um, 40 to 60 hours of total exposure time, and then they were able to reveal this quasar even better. So I'm still impressed that I can see that quasar with only three hours of total exposure time. It's definitely great. And the only problem I had is that um, I did not dither in this case, which uh, unfortunately leads to a lot of walking noise. So that's not that great because we lose a few details, but as you can say, uh, we were still able to reveal like quasar. So I really hope that you can, that you can see that object, that structure, because uh, when editing this video, we will definitely lose a few details, um, a lot of image quality, definitely. So I really hope that you can see that object in uh, the final video. So we're looking at the image in full quality. So what I'm doing right here, I can definitely see the object here. I really hope that you can see that in the video in the end as well. So I really hope that. Um, yeah, so this is definitely one of the most distant objects I've ever captured. So when comparing the age or the distance of that object with the age of the universe, you will definitely realize that um, you won't find a lot of objects that are more distant than that one. So that's definitely one of the most distant objects you can capture. So if you guys know another quasar um, that is even more away from Earth, definitely feel free to write that down below in the comments. And then I plan to capture that object too. So when capturing this framing the next time, definitely look at your image if you can find the quasar in your file image. So that's definitely a great object to capture when knowing that this quasar is located in your framing. So in general, I really hope that this um, video was interesting and helpful to you. I personally was definitely impressed what we amateur astrophotographers can do when it comes to astrophotography. So some people always think that um, those galaxies are the most distant objects in your image, but when seeing that we can capture objects that are 10 billion light years away from Earth, it's per that's pretty impressive. And um, I was definitely amazed when I looked at my fallen stacked image and um, saw that object here. So that definitely is something I find really, really amazing. So if this video was interesting to you and 
it was fun watching this video. I would definitely appreciate the like and the subscription. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching and until next time, clear skies, Felix.